Let's talk about data clumps. Data clumps is a cold smell. And remember, a cold smell is an indicator that something may be poor about the architecture of your code. It's not necessarily that it definitely is poor, it's just an indicator that it might be. So what are data clumps? Data clumps are when more than one pieces of data is oftentimes found together. Martin Fowler gives a great example. Imagine, for example, that you have a start date and you have an end date, and you find these two pieces in your application oftentimes together. It, in other words, it's not that you are at some point in your application only finding the start date or only finding the end date, but usually you come in contact with both of them at the same time. You have a start date and you have an end date. That would imply that you can probably extract an object that contains both of these two things. So instead of passing around the start date single-handedly and instead of passing around the end date single-handedly, you pass around a date range. Ben Ornstein also employs this particular example in a great talk called Refactoring from Good to Great. I'm linking that in the description, so be sure to check that out. I think he also explains it very nicely when he says that a good way to identify a data clump is that <clears throat> when one of the pieces do not make sense in isolation, but only make sense together, that's when you know that you have a data clump. So again, think about the date range example. Only a starting date makes no sense unless you have an ending date as well. But of course, again, cold smells and not necessarily always problems. So of course you could have a start date without an ending date hypothetically. It could be that the ending date is infinite, for example. But this is purely hypothetical. So data clumps are when more than one object is usually found together, which then implies to you that you could probably extract a new object and put these pieces into the new object. So to make these pieces members of the other object. Another example of a pretty clear-cut scenario could be if you have, if you find first name and last name passed around oftentimes together. That would imply that you are probably missing a user object that would encapsulate these two properties. But now we're talking about very obvious scenarios. Let's talk about the scenario that is less obvious. What if you, for example, find a user and a credit card at the same location? Spontaneously, this doesn't feel like a data clump. Even if they are passed around together, it might feel like they are totally different things and thus shouldn't be, be coerced into one object, or rather encapsulated and had within a single object. But it entirely depends on your application. If you're in a checkout process and, for example, this, e this is the decided credit card and the decided user, then perhaps it does make sense to pass them around together. If you think about the term payer, for example, then suddenly it makes a lot more sense. It's not a user, it's not a credit card, it's not a user and a credit card, it's a payer for the particular card. And that kind of makes a lot more sense. So just because it doesn't seem like an object spontaneously doesn't necessarily mean that it's not an object. Give it a serious thinker and try to describe the clump using one word. If you can't find a word that does describe the clump pretty well, then you're probably looking at something that wants to be extracted into an object and not kept as separate, separate pieces. Let's just mention what the benefits of this would be. So for one, the benefit is semantics. So it's easier to, for, for a reader of your code to understand what they are dealing with if they have one word. Because they then understand that these two things are two pieces of one thing and not two completely separate pieces and they have a name for that thing. That's particularly evident in the Ben Ornstein case where you have starting date and you have ending date. It's suddenly a lot easier to understand what's going on if you're talking about a date range. Lastly, we'll discuss this in more detail some other time, but generally, because of coupling, fewer arguments to a method is better than many arguments. So you are coupling to less things if you have fewer arguments. So coercing pieces of a data clump into a single object reduces the number of parameters that we have in our methods, which from a coupling perspective ought to be a good thing.